Hey everyone, welcome back to Stratelli Studios. I'm Jeff Castanon, and I am back with another breakdown of Romanticide by Nightwish. This is part three, and in part three, I am going to go over the chorus, the bridge, and what is played underneath the guitar solo. Now, I wanted to make a comment about part two, and Unfortunately, I was calling the two of the, two of the parts in that video, I, I was calling them a pre-chorus and a chorus, but after going further into the song, I realized that was just not, not the right thing to call them. So what I was calling the pre-chorus in part two, I'm now calling it a break. And what I was calling the chorus, I'm calling that a pre-chorus. So... I changed the title and the description and the, and the thumbnail of the video, but I'm still saying pre-chorus and chorus in the video. Unfortunately, I can't change that. So sorry about that. Um, I wish I'd caught that. But anyway, so let's get into the chorus. Okay, let me back it up to that little break part from part two, and then we'll go into the chorus so you could hear what that sounds like. Here we go. So I'll tell you what's so cool about this section, this chorus here, is that there is this consistent um, theme here. Okay. But what's interesting about this is the chords that Empu is playing in the section that follows that chunky part, that that little intro uh, of the chorus, let me let me play enough of this so you could hear the chords. Okay, so what's interesting about these chords is that it's a combination of he's playing like these power chords that consist of the root, the fifth, and then the octave. Okay, you guitar players know what that means. That, that's called a power chord. Um, but he is playing those power chords with the root, fifth, and octave. And then the next chord that he's playing is, again, the power chord with the root, fifth, and the octave. But he's also adding in a low fifth. So he's got two octaves and two fifths. So that is going to cause him to change his fingering and the way he's holding his hand to go back and forth because it alternates between that power chord and then the power chord with the fifth in the bass. What's really cool about it is that it's causing a really neat melody in those chords because he's doing that. Um, so it sounds awesome, but it's a little bit tricky to play. So let me do that. Let me play that again so you could hear that. And um, just envision him having to change his position and his hand, uh, the chord at the same time here. <laughs> Okay, so it's easy to figure out and digest what he's doing. Ja 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 right? He's playing the chord. But that's not enough. Halfway through, he changes 
the note that is kind of his pedal tone note, the note that the, the chord pedal, like a pedal tone chord, that, that chunky, chunky thing that he does in between those cool chords, he changes that. It's not no longer that, that open string chord. So check that out. Listen. Keeps the interest. Keeps the interest. I love it. Okay, so following that is one of my favorite parts here is this quick picking thing. Okay, so he's doing this on the low string and it's open. He's not, he's not fretting. Um, he's playing it open. So uh, if, if you're a guitar player, you, you know that when you are playing an open string, you run the risk of it ringing and you have to mute that string with both your right and your left hand working together because you still got to play the note, but then you have to uh, palm mute to get that sound, the sound of it, that chunky little sound not ringy, but chunky. And, and then you use your left hand so that you can mute the string from making noise in the places you don't want it to, to, to sound. So having to do that and, 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 uh, um, I'm going to play it again and I'm going to, and I want to show you my performance of this section. So you could see what I'm talking about that I'm having to use both hands. And in order to play that consistently, also you have to, find the right position with your right hand um, on the string so that you have the right amount of tension on that string. And then here's the funny part about it is that you actually have to be a little loose when you play it. If you tense up, you're gonna have problems. You're gonna have problems. You have to stay a little bit loose when you're playing that. Okay, so you'll you'll see in the video um, how I'm playing it and, uh, when I was learning that, I actually had to um, kind of hone in on the best way to, to play it. And, and I, I found the best way to play it for me. Maybe it's different for you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you these uh, little tidbits based on, on how it was for me to play it and me to learn it. And, and maybe that'll translate to you and you, know, you could get something out of it. So I'm going to back it up a little bit. And then I'm going to play that section and I'm going to point out some things about that bridge section that I really like. So here we go. Drum. Kick drum. Same pattern. Double time on the snare. Adds excitement. Gets us ready for the guitar solo. Right? So those chords, ba da ba da, really amps you up for that guitar solo. So, what I love about this is we're starting off, that snare is hit like a halftime type of hit. And then halfway through this section, he double times that snare. And my mind kind of explodes thinking about him playing, about Yuka playing the kick drum pattern and then having that snare come in also. And to be able to play those two things together, you gotta be really coordinated. So um, again, listen to this break and check it out because it starts with only Empu. Then the drums come in at a halftime feel. Then the drums uh, uh, double time it from, from that. It, it, the snare is, is hit on the two and four. And, and then they play these chords ba -da, ba -da, that launch you into the guitar solo. 
all of these things create excitement. All of these things are walking you, walking you up to the edge of the cliff. You know, this is what I love about this, these guys and the, and the way they write, right? So listen to what's going on here. It's just empty. There. Snare's only on three. All right, so it goes in to those chords. And play this again. So can you count it out? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hitting on 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 the third beat, but then switches to one, two, three, four, one, two, four, two, four. So now he's hitting on the two and the four instead of on, on the three. So uh, very, very cool. Okay, so that brings us to the guitar solo and what is happening here. Uh, I'm going to save the breakdown of the guitar solo for another video because um, there's enough here to go over in support of that solo that I wanted to make sure I got this in. Um, the guitar solo is going to take a whole video. So this is what is going on underneath, underneath Empu's guitar solo. And I want to um, comment on the fact that Marco is playing these licks. When you hear them, Marco is playing these licks uh, also, which really, really helps to to um, unify what's going on in this part. The drums are playing, the drums, bass, rhythm guitar, maybe even the keys, I, I don't remember, but all of this stuff, they're all playing these licks together. They're all playing these rhythms together. All of that helps to support and enhance what Empu's doing, doing in his guitar solo. So let me go over what the rhythm section, what, the, what, what everyone else is doing underneath Empu's solo. Here we go. Okay, so one of the things that you might notice when you're listening to this is that this is not the same four bars over and over. The first part of that, that that's the same, the beginning of every bar, but the endings of every bar, the endings are different. I love that. Keeps it interesting, varies it up. Um, this... This is one of the things that I love about the way that they compose and why it's always so interesting. They don't just repeat the same stuff over and over. So let's take this one section at a time. So here's the first, here's the first of the four uh, sections that are going on in the guitar solo. So, ba -da, ba -da, ba -ba. so this is a super, super cool lick, but you, it's a little tricky. You got to be careful with it because that ba -da 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 -da, those chords, the first chord of that happens on the fourth beat of the previous bar to the end of, of this section here. So you have to be ready to play that first chord of that ending part for this section. You have to be ready to play that on the fourth beat of the previous bar, okay? So um, that's, that's the first little tricky part. Okay, so the next part has a different lick. Here we go. All right. Cool, just a cool little lick. Here's the third part of this. Ooh, they changed 
the first part now. They changed a chord in that first part, and they changed the end of the phrase. <laughs> And then they change that lick at the end. So here's the last one. Okay, then they go back in to the chorus. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to comment on something because somebody asked me how I came up with these parts. And because uh, as far as I know, and I may be wrong, but I've not seen this stuff transcribed for guitar. I don't think that there's a book out there. Maybe there is. I don't know. Let me know if there is. It'd be cool to, to cross check what I'm hearing. But just to let you guys know my process with this and how I arrived at these parts. So my I, I lean towards the live version of this song because I love the live version uh, as opposed to the studio version. Studio version is cool, but the live version I think is, is awesome. Okay. So I will listen to the live version and try to uh, pick off as best as I can because it, it's there's a lot going on in the live version, but I'm really, really listening hard and pulling off the notes and the, and the chords and all of that off of the live version. Now, there are some times where I can't hear clearly what's going on because vocals come in and keys come in the drums are doing fills and I lose it. I can't hear what's going on in there because other stuff is obscuring it. So what I'll do is I'll go to the studio version. I'll go to the studio version and it's real easy to pick stuff off of the studio version because it's so clean. So I'll go to the studio version. I'll pick it off the studio version, no problem. And then I'll bring it back, lay that in against the, uh, the live version track, which as you could see right here, it says Romanticide.1. Um, this is the actual live track that I have sat in here because they play to a clock and it's exactly, exactly 160 beats per minute. Okay. At least the first part is that changes later on, but I'm able to play against that and to know if what I'm playing and what I have transcribed is correct. So that's the second stage. Now, also I have found on the internet and I will leave a link for you guys to check out that there's a site that somebody has broken down and transcribed um, this as best as they, they could. And you could actually hear the parts and play the parts. You could read the tab. It's a tab uh, transcription and you could read the tab and you could hear it. Okay. So that's super, super cool. I use that as my third level. And, and the reason why I do is because I noticed that it's not um, correct. Uh, it's not totally correct. There are some mistakes in it. There's some flaws in it, but, but, um, it's, it, it has enough of uh, a transcription that is correct for me to go and like cross check what I'm hearing and see if it's the same, because if it is the same, then that's just more reinforcement that I got it right. But, um, yeah, definitely I listened to it and I, I checked out their transcription against both the live and the studio version. And in some spots it's wrong and their, and their beginning, uh, timing was wrong, uh, the way they interpreted it too. Um, which I don't blame them because I got it wrong the first time too. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll put a link for you guys. Um, if you want to check that out. So anyway, let's move on. So after the guitar solo, they go back into the course, but the really crazy thing about when they come back into the chorus is there's an acapella section and the the vocals come in everything is out and then the band comes in but what they did was instead of it being the acapella part and then the band comes in and then that's the one of the beat and then they do the phrase from there on all they did as far as the mu music is concerned is instead of pushing the phrase, they are considering that the phrase starts right at the end of the guitar solo, but they, they tacit, it. They, they don't play the music so that the voices come through and then they continue on from the second beat of the phrase of the chorus. And that 
is tricky, my friends, because when I was learning this, I kept screwing this up. Because when you come in, your natural inclination is to interpret that as the one of the phrase, but it's not. It's the two. It's the second beat. So when I was learning this, I kept screwing up because I kept feeling I was coming in on the one. Let me demonstrate why this is challenging. Okay. So I'm going to play. I'm going to play this phrase as it is with the acapella part. So let me back it up a little bit and then you could hear how this goes. <laughs> So if you are interpreting that as the one, like we do back here, listen, listen to the chorus when there's no drop out on the first beat. Now, if I was interpreting this part as the one. Whoa. That little change came in too early. So that's the tricky part about doing this is that you have to remember to leave silence on beat one and in your head still hear the lick so that you make sure that you are hitting this part. At the right spot. All right, so let's continue on. I'm going to take it from this chorus on out. Here we go. into that next change, right? Okay. So it goes into that next change. That'll be coming up in, in another video. Um, so the interesting thing about this is they do a tempo change. The beginning, they start off 160 beats per minute. As soon as they hit this fermata, as soon as they hit that power chord, the tempo changes to 115 beats per minute. And I tracked this against the original recording and because I had, I knew they changed tempos, but I wasn't sure where they changed the tempo. I wasn't sure if they changed the tempo at the beginning of the hi-hat count off, or if they did it at the beginning of that power chord hold that Fermata there. So I, I guessed right. And I thought, you know what? The easiest thing for them to do is to do the tempo change right at that power chord and let it go for a couple bars, just hanging on that power chord. And then that count off should come out right on the beat. And that's exactly what they did. So, so I'm going to turn on the click track and you're going to hear how this changes. Okay. Here we go. So did you hear that? Did you hear how that came in? Let me do, uh, let me do chess, the guitar and the click track. So you maybe you could hear it better. Hear that? Hear how it slows down. Now the hi-hat comes in. So that's cool. Um, so one other thing I wanted to show you guys, which was uh, kind of funny, I noticed when I was isolating the tracks is when I played this, I had my guitar 
um, I had the backing track cranked up really super loud because I like to play loud. And uh, so I had it cranked up when I was playing the guitar part. And uh, at the end of this power chord, the backing track bled through my pickups. So let's see if you guys, let's see if you could hear it. <laughs> Did that come through? Could you hear it? <laughs> oh, that's a lot of fun. All right. Anyway. Okay. So that's it for this video. Um, this was a lot of fun breaking this section down. There's a lot of really interesting guitar parts and it's a blast to play. Oh man, guitar players out there, you really should um, learn this because it, it's just, the whole song is just so much fun to play. Um, so I think in part four, I think I'm going to want to do, I don't know, should I do the guitar solo or should I um, just continue on with the next section and the rhythm? Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. I'm guessing it's probably the guitar solo, so <laughs> I'll just say that now. Um, anyway, come back for more. If you're new to the channel and you're checking this out, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. You know the drill. I even have a Patreon. Go check that out if you're interested. And um, make sure to support uh, Nightwish as well. Go and subscribe to their channel and Flora's channel and... Um, you know, like and subscribe over on that side too. Um, these guys really, really deserve tons of support. They're they're awesome. They bring such beautiful and kick-ass mu music to the world. So um, yeah, I'm doing my best to support them as well. So anyway, come back for more and we'll see you in part four. Bye. <laughs>